And everybody said, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, amen. Good morning. Welcome today. We're glad that you're here with us. And we just, uh, if you're watching us online, we say a special welcome to you as well. We're glad that you joined us in that way. And I want to uh, do a couple things. One, I want you to invite uh, somebody next week, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, where my Kansas City Chiefs, all right, will face that other team. So I invite you. I also invite all the Packer fans in the house and even the Raider fans in the house to join the light side, all right, uh, the right side. And no, we're just excited. Um, I shouldn't say I'm excited. All right, you might or might not be excited. The last time the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl uh, was uh, January of 1970. I was in my mom's womb and uh, legitimately was born four months later. And so I, it's been a while, all right? So I don't really remember that one. Uh, I remember a lot of heartbreak in between there. So excited for this, uh, for this coming Sunday. But there will be a gospel message. Uh, we're starting a new series next Sunday called Tall Tales, and we're talking about the lies that we tell ourselves and the truth that's found in God's Word. And so we're going to look at, at four lies that oftentimes we tell ourselves. And so I want to invite you to that. I also want to invite you to join us uh, right here in the cafe uh, on Wednesday night. We have an adult Bible study. We have been looking in the month of January, we've been looking at the passage of Scripture from Colossians chapter 3, where our theme verse uh, Colossians 3.10 comes from. And so this week we're looking at the last few verses of that chapter, and it's been really a rich time uh, digging into God's Word, and so I would invite you to come this week. I love what uh, Carl said last week. He said he's learning the importance of dying to himself, and oh, that we would all right, learn that lesson. So again, we meet in the cafe. Well, over the last three weeks, we have revealed our annual theme word, Becoming, and then we laid out a new resource uh, that we have been working on for several months to help us along that journey. That resource is called Pathway. You can find it at bcpathway.life. And it is, we have seven practices that we'll be talking about throughout the year. Uh, the first two practices were last week and this week. We'll be talking about the others spread throughout the year. And, uh, and so that's what these practices are. And the goal is... So we're doing self-denial last week, prayer this week, and so from now until we talk about practice number three, uh, we're encouraging you in your bridge groups and in your own life to just go, God, how can I grow in these two things? And this is all I'm going to focus on right now. How can I focus uh, or how can I grow in denying myself and in prayer? And then we're, we're in our groups, we're going to look at those things and just ask that God would help us in those. Now, when we get to the next uh, path, the next practice on our pathway, uh, which will be sometime in March, when we get to that, it's not, it's not like we go, okay, I don't have to pray anymore or deny myself. It's like you're adding the next one, all right? So it's not, we try to put it in bite-sized pieces that way so you're not overwhelmed. Does that make sense? Three people, praise God. So <laughs> I'll pray for the rest of you that you'll be enlightened and helped. So, uh, but anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. Today, I'm going to talk more in depth about the second practice on our pathway, which is prayer. And again, if you want to grow in this practice, go to bcpathway.life and check out the resources there. We'll be adding to those resources as we go throughout the year, so keep checking back to that. Now, before we talk about prayer, I want to talk to you about... Doors, thank you. You guys are really quick, so... Now, how many of you know a door only has, you know, a few functions? It opens to allow access and entrance, and it closes to deny entrance and access, and that's about it, all right? That's, uh, that's the purpose of the door. Pretty simple. Would you agree with me? That's pretty simple, okay? This is a common analogy in our culture. Let me say before I get started that... Um, I have been in full-time ministry for 26 years, and I can say this. I've, I don't know how many times I've preached on prayer in, uh, in over those two and a half decades. I can say this. I've never been more excited to preach or speak on prayer in my life. I can also say that God showed me some things this week that I've never seen before, 
And so maybe you have, maybe this won't be fresh to you, uh, but my prayer, and throughout this time of fasting this month, my prayer for you has been, God, show us something new. Uh, Not that it wasn't already in God's word, we just didn't have eyes to see. And so God, show us something new today, and that's my prayer for you. He woke me up at 3.30 this morning and showed me two more things that I had not seen before, so I'm praying that he'll show it to you this morning uh, through me. Now, this is a common analogy in our, in our culture. Uh, for instance, someone is looking for a job, and they're hoping and praying for the right door to open, right? Or perhaps you are, you're working hard at whatever your current job is, and you're hoping your boss notices and he opens a door of opportunity or a door of advancement for you. Or there's an athlete that's been often overlooked, and they're looking just for a door of opportunity. You know, I think back to uh, Tom Brady, right, sitting behind Drew Bledsoe and, uh, that year, and, and Bledsoe gets injured, And it's a door of opportunity for Tom Brady to step in and lead uh, the Patriots to the Super Bowl and lead Drew Bledsoe to an exit from New England, right? He never again started for New England because Tom Brady did such a great job. I think personally of uh, Trent Green, who was the starting quarterback for the St. Louis Rams in 1999. In 98, the Rams went 4-12, and even though they had some pieces that looked really good but they were missing. They had Tony Banks as their quarterback, and he just wasn't very good. And so they went out, and they traded for Trent Green. They signed him, and then they traded for Marshall Falk from the Indianapolis Colts, and there was a lot of enthusiasm. We lived in the St. Louis suburbs at that time, and I can tell you there was a lot of enthusiasm uh, happening around the city of St. Louis because they looked good in the preseason. They were just putting points on the board. And then in game three of the preseason, Marshall Falk misses a block against the San Diego Chargers and Rodney Harrison, and he comes in and hits the back of Trent Green's knees and shreds his ligaments. And his door of opportunity was slammed shut. But the door of opportunity opened for Kurt Warner who to that point had only started in the Arena Football League and in Europe, in NFL Europe. He had been on the bench for the Packers. He had been on the bench uh, for the Rams. And now a a door of opportunity was open to him. And he stepped through that, and he threw for 41 touchdowns that year. He led them to and won the Super Bowl in his first year of starting, and he became a Hall of Fame quarterback. And Trent Green was traded to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's just the way that that worked. So it was a door. And even the door at the front of bridge is important. Uh, We stationed Tom there. Uh, We stationed others there that are ready to open it because one of our prayers, and this is a constant prayer, is that when guests walk in through those doors that they just kind of have a feeling that they've come home. You know, it's important. Doors are important. Now, Strong's Concordance defines door in the Bible as, hear this, a curtain, a uh, beads hanging in a row, like the 70s, with a lava lamp. No, not, that part's not real. Other words, door. That's good that door is defined as door. That's good. Um, a gate, entrance, a way of passage. Really important that you think of door in that way. Right Now, we'll get back to doors in a minute. That's just your teaser, right? Spiritual question for you. Want participation? So if this is true of you, raise your hand. How many of you, you want to have a vibrant, healthy relationship with God? Would you raise your hand? All right, that's pretty good. I like it, hands and feet. Just raise it all, whatever you got, you know. (laughs) Now, if that's going to be true in our lives, then prayer has to be in the center of that because you cannot, turn to your neighbor and say, cannot. You cannot have a vibrant, healthy relationship with God without a vibrant, healthy prayer life. Because think of it this way, like one of the pictures throughout Scripture of our relationship with God, and I've said this a lot, is marriage. And I don't know if you know this, but you can't have a vibrant, healthy relationship with a spouse unless you have a vibrant, healthy communication. Unless you can 
talk to and listen and listen and listen to your spouse, right? That, that's how you have a healthy relationship. You can't have a healthy relationship unless you can c- communicate. That doesn't mean you have to do it with words because there's people that can't hear. Maybe they're deaf. You still have to have communication with your hands. There has to be a way to communicate one to another, right? And, it, and a healthy prayer life begins and it thrives from one place, and that's the grace and forgiveness of Christ. That's where it starts. So because of sin, you and I were locked out. We were shut out from God's presence. Like we could not get to God. There was a door that was slammed shut because of our sin. The door was closed shut, and sin created this barrier between us and God, between our brokenness and his perfection. There was an impenetrable wall that we couldn't get through. We could not open the door. We couldn't go around it. We couldn't go over it. We couldn't go under it. Literally, we were blocked out from getting into God's presence because of our sin. The door was shut. But the gospel, the good news, and not just good, but the best news that we will ever hear is because of God's great love for us, God provided a door. He provided a door for you and for me to enter into his presence and to come close to him so that we could talk with him freely and confidently. That entrance, that door, is Jesus. Right, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Like, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except what? except through me. That's how we get from where we are to where God wants us to be. That's how we get into relationship with him is it has to come through the door of Christ Jesus. John 10, seven through nine, Jesus said, for sure I tell you I am the door of the sheep. All others who came ahead of me are men who steal and rob the sheep, did not obey them. Just in case you missed it the first time, he repeats himself, I am the door. Anyone who goes in through me will be saved from the punishment of sin. So Jesus took our sin upon himself, taking our place on the cross so that when we believe in him, we can receive God's grace and forgiveness. We can receive the love of God, that his sacrifice, it actually opened the door that had been dead bolted by our sin. By the way, back in Bible days, do you know how they locked their door? Right? Once they were in for the evening, they would take a cross beam and they would place it across the door frame of their house and it prevented anybody from coming into their house. That was the lock and key that barred access to the house. Think of, it, think of this verse in that way. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross, carrying the cross beam, He went to the place called Place of the Skull. There they nailed him to the cross, and two others were crucified. So when Jesus literally carried the cross, he was carrying the lock and key to the presence of God. Right? We're actually told through his sacrifice that he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. How many of you have thought of that and thought of like skeleton key or whatever? Guess what? Those weren't around yet. The keys that he took from death, hell, and the grave was the cross beam. That's the, cro- that's the keys that he took. So when he carried the cross, it was the lock and key to God's presence. He opened access. And def- in fact, do you remember one of the definitions? He opened access. Do you remember one of the definitions that I gave at the very beginning about door? One of them, the very first one was what? Curtain. Curtain was is a door. Mark 15, 37 through 18, Jesus from the cross uttered another loud cry. He breathed his last and the door, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This was an enormous curtain that was over a foot thick. All right, this wasn't like an accidental tearing. Literally, God went 
Why did he do that? To show that there was no longer a door separating us from God's presence, but now we could walk straight through. Now we had access to God's presence. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, he opened up the doorway. He opened up the path to God. The curtain, the door of separation was gone forever. Debbie Lindell in her book, She Prays, says this. Jesus, yes, I read a book that's intended for women. Get over it. It was good. <laughs> that's my, uh, my son, Carson. That's actually his pastor's wife uh, there in Springfield, and she's, she's amazing. She was there when we were there in Bible college 25 years ago, so uh, 26 years ago. Anyway, she said this. Jesus makes the connection possible. Without him, we'd have no way to communicate with God, no solution to our separation, but because of Jesus, we can pass through the door that God made for us and draw near to the throne of grace, end quote. And as the letter to the Hebrews tells us in chapter 10, it says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Christ, because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain, right? Through the door into the most holy place. See, the most important thing that you'll ever hear about prayer, I think, is this. Prayer begins with Jesus. It doesn't begin with the words that you try to memorize. It begins just with Jesus. He's the starting point. If you desire to draw closer to God, it's through Jesus through him. Otherwise, you'll forever strive to try to have this relationship with God, but you won't ever really get there because it has to come through Jesus because he's the door. He is the path. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the way to get into God's presence. Now, I believe when you accept Christ as your Savior and your Lord, your soul is made alive to everything that God intends for you to experience in him. That includes freedom from sin, but it includes a whole lot more. It's as if he unlocks the door to his presence, he opens it wide, and he says, come inside. Like, come in. I want to get to know everything. I want you to get to know everything about me and feel comfortable in my presence so I can make your life full and complete. Again, Jesus said, for sure, I tell you, I am the door. See, prayer begins with Jesus. Imagine a door in front of you. Shouldn't be too hard. You know. But God is about, he opens it, and he's beckoning you. He's inviting you inside to a deeper relationship with him. The door represents two things this morning. First, we've already talked about it represents Jesus himself. But it also represents an invitation. Come inside. Come closer. Revelation 4.1 says, After this I looked and saw a door standing open in heaven. And God's saying, come up here. Come. There's things I want to show you. So the question I think, one of the questions this morning is, how is the door, how is it open? Ephesians 3.12 says, because of Christ and. See, it's not just because of Christ. We actually have a part playing on whether the door is open or not. Because of Christ and our faith in him. Because the reality is because of Christ, the door is open. And by open to us at that point, I mean it's not locked. We are still blocked out of God's presence because we haven't, we haven't opened the door, but the door is unlocked. And too many people are, have come to that door, come to God, and they're like, I want, why can't I get in? It's because it's a push door, okay? <laughs> it's actually unlocked, but the only way we can enter the door is through, is through Christ. So it's because of Christ and our faith in him that we believe in him We believe that he is who he said he is, and he's done what he said he's done. And because of that faith in him, then we enter into this relationship with God. 
See, we can now, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. We don't just like, please, sir, my enter in. <laughs> no, it's like, dad. Because <laughs> now we have a relationship. And so we can boldly and confidently enter into God's presence. You know, when Carson comes home from college, he doesn't ring the doorbell. He doesn't stand at the door and knock. He just comes in and goes straight to the fridge. <laughs> you know, there's a thing called refrigerator rights. You've heard this, right? Like if one of you come to my house, I really hope you feel comfortable and welcome. But let's be honest, if you go to my fridge and just start helping yourself, that's just weird. Oh, man, you had leftover steak this week. Thank you. That's, like, odd, all right? Now, but if my son comes home, like, he doesn't have to ask. He can just boldly and confidently go to the fridge and empty it. Can I tell you this? There was one time I bought some specialty ice cream. I had no idea how much it was when I ordered it. Let's be real. It was a five-gallon container of ice cream. And it was peanut butter and pretzel. It was phenomenal. And literally, it came in. I ordered it through Roger and Kerry when they owned Alo Chocolat. And it came in right before, in fact, right after we started the Daniel Fast. <laughs> By the time the Daniel Fast was over, I had one bowl because he wasn't on the fast. <laughs> and so my son ate my specialty ice cream that entire month. Until I was off the fast, it was like I got like a bowl or two of that ice cream. It was horrible. But that's, he had the privilege to rush right in and to avoid me seeing it because I would have stopped that one, okay? <laughs> so how's the door open? Because of Christ and our faith in him. The door's open. We have privilege to go in boldly and confidently. Now, I don't know about you, but I live in a very natural, normal world. Uh, if I'm not careful, it's easy to slip into that mode, that mindset, like that this is all there is. But there is an unseen spiritual world at play every single day. And as a believer and follower of Christ, I have access to experience that, to touch that, to feel that, to influence both the natural and the spiritual. I get to affect and touch both of those, and it's because the door is open. The door into God's presence is open. Our day-to-day -day existence can seem completely absent of the spiritual world. I don't know about you, but I wake up. I work out. I eat something or drink coffee for the first time in a month. Praise God. We get up. We do those things. We run errands. We come home. We parent. We talk with our spouses. We manage our inboxes, our social media. We complete our to-do list, hopefully, occasionally. And the reality is our difficulty in being aware of the spiritual world is not because it doesn't exist. It's because we too often stay on this side of the door. Because the door, in addition to representing Christ himself as the door into God's presence, also represents the daily practice of stepping into God's presence through prayer. And too often we stay on this side of the door and we just think earthly thoughts. And he's inviting us, right? He's inviting us, come. Come in. Spend time in my presence. Your prayer life's the doorway to an intimate place with God that can't happen any other way. And it's beyond our normal experience. Com prayer connects your natural world with the supernatural power and movement of, your, of God, of your creator. See, we're granted access to this whole other world through our faith in Christ. Remember, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now boldly and confidently enter. So you can go through the door. You have access to the supernatural, all-powerful creator through prayer because of Christ. And one of the things that God showed me this morning when I woke up at the ungodly hour, three-something, was this, that prayer is an invitation. It's an invitation to conversation that leads to a deeper connection and devotion. 
Like that's the invitation is just come. And here's the truth. Prayer is not difficult. I think sometimes we've just made it like it's hard. It's not the phrases that you memorize at whatever stage and age. It's not remembering the Lord's Prayer, right? It's conversation. It's talking to the Lord, right? And letting that be a constant conversation throughout your day, not just a specific moment in the morning, though that's awesome. But too often, I think we get intimidated when it's actually quite simple. One of the things that I love about Alpha, which is a class that we do a few times a year, it's starting up again here on Wednesday, the 5th of February. And if you've not gone through Alpha, I strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, But it'll be on Wednesday nights right here. And one of the things I love about that is it goes through really the basics of the Christian faith. One of the things it goes through is prayer. And I don't know how many times I've heard the story of someone that came to Alpha and, you know, they invite somebody to lead out in prayer every week. And, like, for the first several weeks, like, nobody volunteers. The leaders are praying every week, usually. But at some point, somebody that was very uncomfortable praying out loud gets comfortable with the group and gets comfortable with the idea that prayer is just talking to God, and they pray in front of the group. This, this was true of our alpha leader, Maggie uh, Ludwig. This was her story uh, years ago, and uh, I've heard from many others. And so that is such a powerful thing when we just get it, that prayer is just talking. It's just talking to God. And too many times God has invited us into this relationship where the door is open, it's unlocked, but we're trying to force it open by pulling, and it's a push door. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you. I, I, I have. When, uh, you know, you come up to the door and you're just like, and then you see that word on it that says push. <laughs> What's worse is when you just go full force into it, and it's actually a pull. (laughs) I've had that happen before, and it's slightly embarrassing. But let's not make it hard. Let's not make it hard. It's just a conversation. One time when Jesus was teaching, he said these words to everyone that was listening. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Now, We said earlier, this is a door that restricts access to God, and as such, that is Jesus. But in this passage I just read, it represents a different door, and that door restricts access to our answer in prayer, and the key to unlock that door is praying consistently. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking, and eventually the door will open. You know, I wonder how many people have, have prayed for something for years and they haven't seen any movement and finally they just stop. And how many times they stopped one prayer short? When God's word says keep on, just keep on knocking, keep on praying and the door will be open to you but you gotta keep at it. So consistent prayer. Galatians 6, 9 says, don't allow yourselves to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds for the season of reaping the harvest, the wonderful harvest you've planted, It's coming but you got to keep at it. The door is going to open if you don't give up. And so many people believe that they're just surrounded by by closed doors, right? That everything's just closed to them. That maybe it's the, the finances, their financial life and financial stability that just seems like it's barred shut. Or the door to relational happiness, it just seems like a fairy tale. I'll never be happy like that. Or the door to purpose and meaning looks like a wall that has no entrance. But there is one door that we have access to that can change everything in our life. Revelation 3.20, look, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and who gets to open the door? We do. If you hear my voice, it's not enough to hear his voice. It's not enough to know he is the truth. We have to hear his voice, we have to hear that call from him, and we have to open the door. And earlier we said we open the door by faith, by believing him. If you hear my voice and open the door, what's he gonna do? He's gonna come in. And we will share a meal together as friends. See, this is a door that we 
open. If we want a relationship with God, if we want access to his presence, he knocks and we open the door by faith. This door was pictured in the Old Testament. This door was pictured in communion that we talked about earlier. Moses and the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and God and Pharaoh were in a cosmic showdown. And to this point, there had been nine plagues that God had brought upon Egypt because, he, because Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people go free. And then in Exodus chapter 12, God tells Moses he's about to judge Pharaoh with a final plague, the death of every firstborn. And God instructs Moses what to tell the people how they can avoid, how God's people can avoid this judgment. Exodus 12, 7. They are to take some of the blood of the lamb. They're to take some of the blood and they're to smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the houses. And then later in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I find it interesting that God was instructing them to remember what he had done through the door and what he had done to deliver Israel from Egypt. And among the ways that he told them to remember this was Deuteronomy 6, 9, where he says, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. To this day, observant Jews place a mezuzah on the door frames of their houses. Right, and a mezuzah, among other things, this, is in, this one's in English, so that I can read it to you. I'm not real uh, fluent in my Hebrew. But it says, may God's blessing rest upon this house and all who dwell within. May all who enter this house also be blessed. But then it has a little piece of paper that is written in Hebrew, which is the scripture of the promises that God made. So the intention of that is to place it behind the plaque and to place it on the doorframe. It was a way for them to remember, literally every time they walked in their door, they remembered the promises of God. They remembered. There was something so powerful about this imagery that he wanted them to associate it with their doorway. That every time they came in or went out, they were reminded. And so what was so important about the door? Well, the symbol of the blood being on the sides and being across the doorway, if you connect the dots, right? Because if you just smeared blood on the top of the doorway, it doesn't stay there, drips down. So we connect the dots. That door was representing Jesus. It was a sign of the cross. Right, it was reminding us that we have open access to God because of Jesus, that the door's open. We have open access, that we're not alone because of Jesus, that we have a helper in heaven who loves us because of Jesus, that we can experience forgiveness and grace for all that we've ever done because of Jesus. And everything that God has for us is where? It's on the other side of the door. So God's promises to all of us Grace, forgiveness. He died so that all people can experience that. But that promise is on the other side of the door. And the only way that we can access the promises of God, the only way we can access everything that God has for us is through Christ. That's the only way. And so God did everything that he, that he did for you so that we could experience that. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all of God's promises are yes and amen. Right? They've all been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, where's that? Through Christ, our amen. That's how we receive that promise. The promise is already for us. The gift has already been given. But the only way we can receive that and access that is through the door of Christ. Does that make sense? So the message again today isn't pray more based on guilt. The message today is pray more because you have an incredible opportunity. Like at once, you could not talk to God. And now you have access. 
And we have so much available to us. There's so much power. There's so much wisdom. There's so much direction. There's so much discernment. There's so many blessings. And they're all, all of them are on the other side of that door. So the question for you is, will you open that door? Now I want you to remember, the door represents two things this morning. The door is a a door to beginning a relationship with God. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, Jesus will come in. Right? He'll enter. He'll come in. And we'll have a meal together. It's a beginning. He's knocking. Will you open the door? Now, the second thing that this door represents is a door to deepen our relationship with God. So it's a door to begin a relationship, but it's also a door to deepen our relationship with God, meaning prayer is our doorway. Now, this was the other thing that when I woke up this morning at three whatever, that the Lord showed me. I never had thought of this scripture in that way. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's not just a doorway to salvation that he's standing and knocking. It is every single day Jesus is standing at the door of our heart saying, are you going to open the door? Are you going to pray? Are you going to step into my presence today? Or are you going to do this day on your own? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and you open the door, what's he going to do? I'm going to come in. We're going to share fellowship together as friends. Do you get the the invitation that he's given us? See, it's the way that we get to know God better. And in any relationship, the way to a deeper and better connection and devotion is through communication, getting to know one another better. You simply cannot have a great relationship if you don't learn to communicate. And God wants us to want him. He wants us to want a deeper relationship with him, and the door to that deeper relationship is prayer. There is no shortcut. We have to talk to him. We've got to listen. That's prayer. This is a door of opportunity. If you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, he is the door. He's the only way to access everything that God has for you. And so the, the call for you this morning is, will you step in? Will you open that door? How do you open the door? By faith. By believing he is who he said he was. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. I want to give you that opportunity this morning to, to just acknowledge between you and the Lord and myself that you want to open that door, that you want to, to follow after Christ as your Lord and Savior. The only way that we receive what's on the other side of the door is to say yes to Jesus. So I'm gonna look to my far right, to your far left, and just say, is there anyone in that section, this section this morning, that you would say, that's me. I just wanna accept Christ as my Savior. I wanna trust him. I wanna believe in him. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for this morning? Okay, I see that hand. Looking in the two middle sections, is anybody in that those two sections this morning that's you? That you want to step into and believe that Christ is your Savior? I see that hand. I see that one and that one. All right. Looking to my far left, your far right, anyone in that section that you say that's that's me this morning. I just wanna I wanna trust in Christ as my Savior. Everybody, if you would, would you join me in standing today? All across this place, everybody. As we sing this song, our prayer team members will be up here. I'll be up here, and we would love to pray with you, whether that need is to step into a relationship with God through a prayer of faith, believing he is who he said he was, or if you have some other prayer need, we'd love to pray with you. And so as we sing that, we encourage you to come find one of us. If you already follow Christ, then the prayer, the, the challenge for you today 
is not to see prayer as some formulaic have to, but you see it for what it is. This is an incredible invitation from God to just get to know him better, to love him more, and there's no shortcut. So respond in whatever way the Lord would have you to this morning as we sing.